Hi, in the previous tutorial about uh, point clouds, we showed how to try to reduce the number of points in the point cloud without losing information. This is important because in the subsequent step uh, of the, the pipeline to produce a three-dimensional three model from point clouds, it's uh, better not to have too many points. Another important uh, prerequisite uh, in order to go on uh, is to be sure that uh, we have uh, um, the important attributes of the point clouds and one of the most important ones uh, is the normal associated to each vertex of the point cloud uh, if you have a point cloud without a vertex normal you can do some things but uh, it will be almost impossible to be able to produce a three-dimensional uh, mesh uh, to produce a, a geometric surface starting from the points so uh, <clears throat> before going on uh, you have to check in your point clouds if you have the normals well essentially uh, one uh, very straightforward way to see that is for example to try to change the, the the direction of the light and you will see that there is no change in the behavior or there is a kind of strange behavior of the point cloud uh, this is because the normals uh, usually define also the appearance of the point cloud with respect to the light direction. If you don't have the normals, you will have a flat point cloud. Another way to <coughs> see that is to ask MeshLab to visualize the vertex normals. If there are no vertex normals and you um, switch on the show vertex norm normals decorator, you won't see any... Um, um, Factor uh, depicting the normals. Okay. So if you don't have the normals, you could uh, try to uh, estimate them. Usually, um, most of the point clouds that you could uh, have to work with uh, have they usually have the normals in the sense that um, almost all the, the laser scanners can come out with data uh, showing not only the position but also the normal of the points. So it's quite important that when you export the data from the, the laser scanners you try to export also the normals even the the data coming out from the reconstruction then steel reconstruction uh, can uh, have the normals it's quite easy to have them so it's really important to have the normals and uh, it's uh, actually it's currently quite unusual to not to have normals. If you don't have normals, maybe you just forgot to save them when you made the last uh, um, uh, change to your point cloud. But anyway, in some cases, if you're dealing with the old uh, scan data or you got some uh, data from other people and you cannot retrieve the normals, uh, you have this uh, kind of backup solution where you can try to compute the normals starting from the point clouds. Essentially, when you compute the normals, for each point you go and have a look at the neighbors and you try to guess the, the, the shape of the surface uh, defined by the point cloud and you get the direction of the normals for each point. Essentially there is a problem with that in the sense that you can estimate the direction of the normal but uh, it's hard to estimate the verse of the normal. Uh, the verse of normal essentially is defined by, it, what, by what, what is the outside and inside part of the surface which is uh, um, described by the point clouds. Okay, so there is a kind of ambiguity. You, it's hard to, to know in advance which is the, 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 the verse of the normals, uh, even when you're able to uh, estimate the, the direction in a proper way. Um, so the best way to compute the normals from a point cloud is the filter which is called compute normals for point sets. If you choose this uh, filter, essentially there is only one uh, um, value that you can change is the number of neighbors. This means how many points you will uh, neighbor points you will analyze for each point of the point cloud to try to estimate the 
the, the shape of the surface defined by the point cloud. So the bigger the number of neighbors, um, the more robust you will be to noisy data, but uh, uh, the more risky will be to have a not uh, so precise estimation of normals. Uh, especially when you're dealing with data which has uh, which have more or less the same density uh, not a lot of uh, mm, neighbors is probably the right choice so the default value is 10 if you don't get um, a satisfying result with 10 maybe you can try to reapply the filter with different uh, values it really changes a bit uh, from one data set to the other 10 usually could be a good starting choice at least for a first try then the other possibility in the context of this filter is to define a value which will help you in disambiguating the verse problem in the estimation of the normals. That is to say that if, for example, like in this case, you have uh, uh, the, an, an information about uh, the position of the scanner, this is uh, the, 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 the clear position of the circle where the scanner was, and uh, if I just show the axis, I can see this is, a, this is a typical point cloud coming from the scanner where the scanner position was exactly in the center of the reference system. So if you know what is the position of the scanner, then you can also uh, easily disambiguate the verse of the normal because the normal will have the verse which looks also uh, always in the direction of the scanner position. So this uh, option, flip normals with respect to viewpoint, uh, gives you the possibility to give a reference point which will be used as a reference to disambiguate the verse of the normal. In this case, you see that the position of the scanner was in the center, so I just leave the coordinate of the scanner in the origin of, uh, of the reference system, and I will disambiguate the direction of the normals. If you, don't, uh, if you have no possibility in setting a reference point, for example, the, the data coming from the density reconstruction usually uh, are not that easy to handle from this side uh, you can only say pray that uh, the filter will be able to estimate the vertex uh, verse vertex normal verse in the right way there are some ways to try to <coughs> fix uh, possible errors in the es estimation of the verse but they are quite annoying uh, to, to be applied anyway just try to see if the vertex normal estimation will work properly in this case so I just apply the filter so I will use the scanner position to disambiguate uh, the, the verse of the normals this uh, filter works quite well but uh, sometimes it crashes um, it could also take quite a lot of time if you have a, a model which is made by a lot of vertices so if you have millions of vertices it could really take ages uh, but um, when it works it usually works fine so we got uh, a result in a quite short time first of all we can check if there is a change in the behavior of the of the point cloud if we change the light position and we see that there is a change and if we go and uh, visualize the vertex normal now we see that there are vectors depicting the vertex normals and showing the direction of the normals with respect to the surface that is depicted by the point cloud so we can see here I'm just changing this parameter to make the vector smaller you see that uh, you can check if the direction of the, if the verse of the normals and the, the estimated direction is the right one essentially you can see that the estimation was quite good clearly you know, well, where the points are have a very small density or we have ve you have very small clusters of points it's really hard to estimate the uh, the normals and so this could give problems but usually this kind of data are so s small in terms of number of points that they usually don't affect the final results and uh, so this is a quite straightforward way to be able to uh, obtain this uh, attribute of the point clause which is really key to go on and trying to produce um, three-dimensional models starting from a point cloud. One last and final remark is when you 
save the, the, the point cloud after uh, having estimated the, the, the vertex normals, you have really to be careful to uh, pick the saving of the normals of the vertices because uh, the default won't have it checked. So if you save the point cloud as it is like this, you won't save the normals. So be quite careful because uh, uh, otherwise everything that uh, we did in this tutorial will be totally unuseful. So please remember every time that you work with a point cloud, every time that you make changes in a point cloud, when you save the point cloud to check the normal um, value, other, otherwise you will lose an extremely important attribute of the point clouds. So please feel free to check with this filter. Um, but uh, again, let me say that uh, if you are able to get the normal information directly from your source of data, it's really much better than estimating uh, the vertex. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye.